Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mack, and today we're talking about something different apart from the technical. We're going in and diving deep in with a bit of a basic idea on how to do your communication OSCEs. Now, a lot of time when um, people start teaching and they say, what's the communication, right? You know, it's, it's killed OSCE or technical OSCE. I personally feel I would call this communication because this is 100% in my opinion how you communicate. You have enough knowledge. When I make a video for my Instagram, for my patients or like an educational video on my TikTok channel, I don't have to read any book because you know, I'm trying to explain it to a layman person what's happening in their tooth or how to brush their teeth properly, a bit of a, you know, education wise that, you know, you should go and see a dentist every six months. It is same as that. Every time you go in the depth of more and more and knowledge and try to confuse yourself, you will go in the wrong path, which I don't want you to go. Think it is as a normal patient and you have to communicate. And this is exactly a communication OSCE. Um, I generally, with my time schedule, it was so busy, it was not getting time to teach communication. But after I've said this online course, I've seen so many people like taking my course, passing mostly all the technical, but this is the area which is lacking quite badly. And when I actually talk to most of them and say, can you tell me what did you do in the exam and do a bit of a role play just to see what they have actually said? I get shocked. I don't know where did they did the learning from, did they not practice enough, but it is basic. It is basic knowledge. So that's why I thought this video is really important. And at the same time, I will be launching the communication course really, really soon, in which once someone has done the full online, uh, completed all the videos, then they have an opportunity to do a bit of a role play with me as well. So let's talk about communication today. Let's talk about the basic science behind it and how can we actually com improve our communication skills, especially in the exam point of view as well. You see this line, remember this line, very, very important. Most important step before you start, kick your fear outside the park. Now this comes with practice. It's not gonna be easy. This is not going to be easy. A lot of times we just say, take your fear out of the park. It's not that easy. Why do things start to get better? Or, or I would say, when do things start to get better? When you have practiced something so many times, like I've done the crown prep so many times, even thousand times now, even more, that I'm so comfortable that even there's 500 people watching me, I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know my shit. So at the same time, once you've practiced something so many times, you tackle that first line, which you see right now. This is very important, but because we are super stressed, we cannot perform. And with communication, I feel like the more relaxed you are, the more relaxed your body language is. You would go and take seminars about improving communication skills and Half of the time they talk about your body language, your tone. You talk a lot more with your body language than what you say with words. Very important, the more relaxed you are. And I, I talk a lot about tone and we talk about it just in a few minutes, very soon. When I'm relaxed, my tone gets relaxed. And no matter what I do, it just starts making sense. And I feel like when I'm going slow with a bit of a controlled tone, I have a better control in what I'm saying. And I start to get more and more confidence and confident in what I'm saying. The first initial one to two minutes is the pickup. Once you have got your balance right in the communication, it just flows well and you've got that confidence in there. So the first important thing is making sure you understand this because if you don't understand this first line, that's what happens. 
A head full of fears has no space for dreams. And again, this is a bit of a motivational line, but that's the problem. Look at this person's face. If you're distressed, can you actually perform at a good at utmost potential in the exam? And how important is it to perform in the exam when the examiner doesn't know how good you are and you cannot perform? They'd be like, yeah, he was really average. Now, this comes with practice and the more you practice, you will notice that your communication starts to become better. Now, at the same time, the next video would be on the marking criteria and how do we mark OSCEs. That's very important and it's the same as grading criteria that I keep talking about technical tasks. You don't need to be great to pass. You don't need to have a great communication skills to pass. You just need to follow the grading criteria, cover it more than half, and we'll discuss that in the next video. Relax tone, explaining the points, trying to have a conversation rather than just you speaking, starts to flow it starts to get better. This is my personal opinion and I am very uh, strongly about this when I teach that this is my personal opinion and this is what I've worked for me and for most of my students and the colleagues I've trained or taught or discussed with. And this works for most of the people. So there may be one person out there who doesn't work for them but this is what have worked for the majority of the population which we're targeting. So how to communicate effectively with any patient in the exam? I always tell, and I've showed it to people as well, and if you, if you do the whole course and you do the whole course, you'll see that as well. I can do the OSCE scenario or the communication scenario in five different ways. Still nobody can fail me. Because there's one thing which I strongly say and one thing which I personally believe. You can say whatever you want if you can justify. If you're saying something and you have the answer for the why, nobody can fail you. So always remember whatever you're saying, if you can justify why you're saying it or justifying your answer, it works. So any OSCE scenario you take, if you follow the basic principles, you can do any scenario you, you want without a problem. Now there's something called as fearless speaking. What, what I mean by fearless speaking is I open a camera and upload a video on YouTube, I do it in one go. I do zero takes generally or one or two takes sometimes because it stops in the middle. Because I'm a lot more comfortable with my communication or to my speaking, that comes again with more practice. But the more practice you do, you'll be comfortable understanding that I don't need to score 100% every time. I know the OSCE scenario guide, I know the grading criteria, I need to cover more than half every time. And as soon as you start practicing like that, you would notice it starts to fall in place and you're like, actually it's working so well. And the stress reduces as well. Every time you wanna attempt for perfection or 10 out of 10, that's where the problem starts. We fear because we know it's difficult. If you put it at ease and say, you have to score five out of 10, you'd be like, yeah, I've scored five, no problem. If I tell you that you just have to score borderline to pass in technical, you'd be like, yeah, that's easy, no problem. But when I say satisfactory or maybe, you know, getting this margin here, then you'd be like, the stress increases. Same with technical, put it to communication. You don't need to be scared that you have to perform 10 on 10. You will be miss, missing those three to four points, but more than half, 60 to 70% is what you aim for. And then once you get comfortable, you start to get better and better and it works. So the most important thing is be natural. Now, when I say be natural, what do you mean by be natural? What do you mean by this point? Be natural means one of you might be from India, one of you might be from Pakistan, one of you might be from Brazil, 
someone is from France, someone is from Australia, basically, but they, they went, studied overseas, and now they're back. Everybody has its own style in which they are natural. If I'm from Pakistan and my language I've been brought up from the past 24 years, I speak a bit differently to the other person there who's American or Aussie. If I try to copy how they say it, my naturalness will go away. Now, what happens when you're not natural? When you're not natural, you're not confident anymore. When you're not confident in that first initial two to three minutes, your stress levels are high, the balance and the stability that you want to get in the first two, three minutes, you don't get it. And then after you cross the first two, three minutes, you haven't got the balance. Now you're not driving it. You're panicking and you're flustered that this is missed. This is missed. I will make sure I do this and that and this and that and this and that. The problem starts to so be natural again and again and again. This is not an English exam. You're doing the English exam already. So don't worry about your accents and stuff. You have to be clear. And again, as soon as you start controlling your tone, we'll talk about this. You start controlling and being slow. You have more control. That's all you need. So be natural. Don't try to copy someone's accent. You just need to communicate. Try to be clear, slow. Just remember that. Don't try to be copying people's accents and trying to, uh, you know, give that big line in, in, in like an accent English that you'd be like, oh, actually, I want to do this. No, don't do that. You don't want to do that. Just be natural. Be who you are. Be how you communicate normally when you're relaxed, when nobody's watching you. Be natural. Very, very important. Second is be confident. What we need to understand is you're a dentist and that's what they're assessing as well. They're assessing that tomorrow you pass, today if they pass you, tomorrow you can go and work in a clinic. We're not in states that they will enter the DDS program first. You, They will teach you for two years and then you're trained. This You don't have training. You are ready already. You just have to prove yourself that I can sit in an Australian clinic tomorrow and start seeing patients that's how they're assessing you. So you have to be confident and behave as a dentist. So justify your decisions as you are the dentist and you're sitting in a dental clinic and patient walks inside your surgery and how are you gonna react and treat him? Now the problem is a lot of people are working on scripts. Yes, there's a format we follow in our mind and I will be showing you a bit of format you should have in your mind and a bit, of, but don't completely follow scripts. Don't follow scripts. When we start following scripts, the problem is you are again trying to put things feed in your mind and we become robotic. As soon as you have a script in your mind, you become robotic because in your mind, you're focusing on point one. And now I will say point two. And now I think I've covered five points. Let's go to point six. When you focus on scripts, it's good to sell your products if you're working in the marketing agency, but it's not good for a dentist because this scenario, you don't know what scenario is there. In the marketing agency, they have one scenario, they wanna sell that product to this population group and they will say the same lines again and again, but you don't know what's the scenario. Maybe you enter the room and there's an angry patient waiting, you can't put the script there. As soon as you enter the room, there's a kid, uncooperative child, you can't put the script there. As soon as you enter, there's a patient in pain, you can't put the script there. So that's why you need to understand the format, how to finish the task in nine, 10 minutes, but try not to be scripted because the problem is you will lose that first line being natural. And as soon as you're not natural, your confidence goes away and your tone disrupts. 
And from all the way, like I'm talking right now that, hello, my name is Dr. Mac. I'm one of the dentists. I'll be looking after you today. You go like, hi, I'm Mac and I will be helping you today. What happened there? Naturalness is gone. I'm more focused on filling out the 10 points. I'm scripted now. You will notice and you practice yourself as well. As soon as you go scripted, you're not natural. You become robotic. So making sure, being confident, that again comes with time. My best tip to you is sit in front of the mirror or record yourself and see how you say it. Practice with your friends. The more you practice, the more you do it with your friends, the more you sit in front of the mirror, the more you get comfortable in your own language, the more you get comfortable with yourself, you start to become more and more confident. Yes, there are 10 other people who say that I don't like Mac. I don't like his communication. I don't like his teaching style. I don't like his dentistry style. But if I'm comfortable with myself, I'm more natural than I'm myself. And because I believe in myself and I'm confident, I would not worry about those 100 or 10 people. I would, I would attract a million more people because you know I'm believing in myself. Same thing you have to do as well, being confident. Once you impress yourself, that's more important for your confidence than impressing 20, 30, 100 other people. Okay? So behave as a dentist. Every time you enter, forget about the script. Just close your eyes and just think for a second that you're the dentist. You have to, this is your patient. How are you going to do it? And this is the exercise I do it. I used to do it with all the, all the, the people I was teaching as well. I was like, close your eyes. Forget the, about the script. You are the dentist for a second. How are you going to do the scenario? All of a sudden they become normal because now they're not scripted anymore. Very important. Justify any decision you take. So if you want to give fluoride or if you want to give six month, a suggested six monthly cleaning or you want them to stop smoking, just justify why you're taking any decision why you're saying that I don't want to pull the tooth out today, I would, I would recommend you going to the hospital because you have six other medical conditions. If I can justify it that Miss, um, Miss Erickson, I have to, you have to understand and that's what my personal opinion would be because you have 